have a prediction. 10 years from now, when you get dressed in the morning, you'll put together a beautiful outfit that combines both the real world clothes in your closet, and here's the interesting part, digital garments that only exist online. You will embrace the exciting world of digital fashion. I also predict that the decision to embrace digital fashion may not be a choice, but perhaps a necessity. The fashion industry is one of the biggest global polluters and one of the biggest GHG, or greenhouse gas, emitters. And with the urgent threat of a climate crisis, the fashion industry as a whole needs radical change. And I believe digital fashion may be the solution. Now, most of us don't realize that when we wear polyester, we're wearing fossil fuels. In fact, more than 60% of all clothes produced today are made from fossil fuels. When washed, these clothes leach dangerous microplastics and harmful chemicals into our waterways, our ecosystems, and eventually into our bodies. On top of this, the fashion industry is notorious for its unsafe working conditions. And there are still many instances of modern slavery to this day. But it's an industry that impacts every single one of us, whether we like it or not. For example, you've likely been convinced that $5 for a t-shirt is a great deal, as opposed to an inherently unsustainable business model that exploits both people and our planet. And this $5 t-shirt represents a larger, more terrifying trend. Due to these artificially low prices, we're buying more clothes than ever before, and we aren't even wearing them. In 2018, the average American purchased more than 60 pieces of clothing. To put that number into perspective, we bought five times as much as our parents would have purchased in the 80s. And that average piece of clothing, that $5 t-shirt, it's only worn seven times before it's thrown away. And if you're thinking, whoa, 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 <laughs> Taylor, you don't understand. I don't just chuck my clothes into the garbage. I'm a good person. I donate them to charity. Well, <laughs> I hate to be the one to break it to you, but that pretty much guarantees it ends up in a landfill or an incinerator. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Now, social media is driving this trend cycle, or the pressure to keep up with these fast fashion trends, and it's changing consumer behavior. One in six young people feel they cannot wear an outfit again if it's been seen on social media. One in six. But it's not just young people. One in three women feel a piece of clothing is old after only wearing it once or twice. We've created a culture of disposable clothing, and I don't think this problem is going away anytime soon. Now, retailers are trying to address this problem of overconsumption with innovative business models. There are rental services that allow users to rent, subscribe, and buy designer apparel and accessories. There's also resale and re-commerce sites that allow people to buy secondhand clothes at a variety of price points, from affordable items to luxury pieces. And by 2030, the fashion resale market is projected to be worth twice as much, double today's fast fashion industry. And while this is exciting, I think many of us, especially young people, we have an inherent need for newness that is not necessarily met by these more sustainable business models. So what if, what if we could follow the trends as many trends as we wanted, without the environmental and the social harm that accompanies today's fast fashion. Enter digital fashion. Digital fashion is a visual representation of clothing using computer technology. It uses a mix of immersive experiences and extended realities to make it look like we're wearing clothes in online spaces. Now, digital fashion can rely on virtual reality, which is when there's a complete immersion into a digital experience. So think of if you're playing a video game and you're wearing one of those VR headsets and you decide to pick out and maybe even buy an outfit for your in-game character or your in-game avatar. That's digital fashion. And these in-game outfits, they're wildly popular. They're known as skins 
and they can cost anywhere from a few dollars to a couple hundred bucks. But augmented reality is where I see the true potential for digital fashion. Augmented reality is when computer-generated images are added on top of the real world. So think of teenagers on social media using those filters that change how you look, making you look like a dog or a cat or quite literally anything else. That's augmented reality. And digital fashion or fashion brands are already using these augmented reality filters as a way to share and distribute digital fashion. Now, the metaverse. I think many of us have heard of it, and I think it's safe to say even more of us are wondering, what the heck is it? <laughs> and that's okay. The metaverse is an immersive, 3D, and connected world. A world where we can interact with one another in the same way we can interact in person, but it's all online. Now, the metaverse uses a mix of augmented and virtual reality, but there's an important distinction. It doesn't actually exist, at least not yet in the fully connected form. Instead, you can think of the metaverse as a vision of the future, as opposed to a current reality. Now, the metaverse is widely believed to be the next evolution of the internet. But in the context of digital fashion, it's easier if we simply think of it as another platform in which we can use digital fashion. We can wear digital fashion on social media, in videos or in video games, and in the metaverse. So what if you could go for a run in the morning before work, then sit down in front of your laptop in your stinky, sweaty workout clothes, and hop on a video call with your boss? But online, your boss sees you in a virtual designer blazer, even though in person, you're still in those stinky, sweaty workout clothes. Or what if you could wear your favorite little black dress, this is mine, <laughs> and you could wear it to every single party, but you're never seen as an outfit repeater. Instead, each time you post a picture of that little black dress online, you're shown wearing the latest trends. Or maybe, rather than the latest trends, each time you post a picture of that little black dress, it's in a different color. One day it's pink, one day it's blue. Really, the opportunities for digital fashion are endless. Now, I know for many of us, after the rise of remote work during the pandemic, when we think of augmented and virtual reality and the metaverse, it kind of leaves a bad taste in our mouths. We're burnt out from online work. And I get that, but I think remote work is here to stay. And I see genuine value in having a digital wardrobe to complement our digital, or in the very least, hybrid lives. So now that we understand what digital fashion is, let's dive into its sustainability impacts, first from an environmental and then a social perspective. Now, from an environmental perspective, the production of digital fashion relies on pixels rather than textiles. So all the typical problems associated with producing textiles, like growing cotton, raising sheep for wool, or extracting those darn fossil fuels to make synthetic polyester, they're all eliminated. On top of this, we don't need to use chemical dyes to color these textiles which reduces the amount of environmental pollution that enters into our waterways. Now, for these reasons and more, the production of a digital fashion garment is estimated to use 97% less carbon dioxide, or CO2, than the production of a typical piece of clothing. Now, retailers are using digital fashion as a way to decrease costs and cut carbon emissions. One example is that retailers are using digital fashion as a way to reduce product returns by showing online shoppers what the clothes they're about to buy would look like on them in person. And by decreasing product returns, this also means that we reduce the costs and the CO2 emissions associated with shipping a product that ultimately the customer doesn't end up liking. I see digital fashion as a viable and sustainable way for brands to reduce their climate impact without necessarily reducing profits. It can be a sustainable business model for fast fashion brands. 
especially after the EU recently proposed new legislation that would limit fast fashion imports. Now, another environmental win for digital fashion is that it uses much, much less water. There's no water needed to produce it, and there's no need to run a digital load of laundry. Our $5 t-shirt uses 2,700 liters of water just to produce. That's not counting every single time we run it through the wash. So it's estimated that the average piece of digital clothing, not just a t-shirt, but pants, etc., the average piece could save 3,300 liters of water. Now to put that big number into perspective, that's enough water for you to get your daily dose of two liters per day for three and a half years. And because we aren't doing any loads of laundry, we also aren't leaching dangerous microplastics and harmful chemicals into our waterways. Now this is really important. Once microplastics enter into our waterways, we do not have any effective way of removing them. This alone should be enough reason to embrace digital fashion. But from a social perspective, there are even more sustainability benefits. Digital fashion can be worn by anyone, regardless of size, body type, or gender. Digital fashion can truly be universal, and it gives a whole new meaning to the phrase, one size fits all. I see digital fashion as a disruptive force that can promote new and unconventional designers. It can create diversity and innovation by allowing these new designers, who have little power in today's hierarchical fashion industry, to create and sell clothes that can reach the masses. In the same way video sharing services have democratized the world of film and TV, allowing anyone with a smartphone to create and share interesting content, Digital fashion can democratize the world of design, allowing anyone, regardless of education, background, or geography, to create and sell digital clothes. And I think the clothes that we're going to see from digital fashion will be unlike anything we've ever seen before. We could see suits made out of water, dresses made out of fire, shoes made out of clouds. Without the typical restrictions of physics and gravity, the opportunities for innovation are seemingly endless, especially when combined with diverse designers. But, there's always a but, isn't there? <laughs> we must remember that this is an emerging technology being built on top of an industry with its fair share of problems. The fashion industry faces huge gender inequity. Rather than a glass ceiling, fashion faces what many call a glass runway. 85% of fashion school graduates are women, yet only 14% of the major fashion brands are run by women. Meanwhile, women spend on average 226% more on fashion than men, but it is men within the industry who hold the power. Within the metaverse, we see a disappointingly similar trend. Leadership positions within the metaverse are dominated by men, even though and I'm going to be honest, this surprised me. Women spend more time and are likely to spend more money in the metaverse than men. But you know what? I'm hopeful. What can I say? I'm an optimist. And I see digital fashion, something that's in its infancy. And I think with thoughtful and intentional decision making, we can create a more just and equitable fashion industry. Now, the last aspect of sustainability I want to address is what is known as the displacement rate. Digital fashion is only an effective and sustainable solution if it displaces or replaces our consumption of fast fashion or physical clothing. Now, I know for many of you, maybe even most of you, this is probably the first time you've ever heard of digital fashion but I can almost guarantee it won't be the last. Analysts predict the global digital fashion market could be worth 55 billion by 2030. To put that into perspective, that's more than 50 times, 5-0, 50 times, 
the Canadian menswear industry. And while it may seem wild to think that within a decade, the fashion industry could experience such drastic and radical change, I urge you to consider how smartphones and social media changed communication. In 2007, the first iPhone was introduced, and in just under a decade, Apple had sold its billionth. In 2005, Facebook was founded, and in eight and a half years, had reached more than a billion users. While digital fashion may seem outlandish now, very soon it could be a wardrobe staple. Now, even if the analysts are right, and digital fashion takes the world by storm, obviously, we're still going to be wearing clothes. <laughs> I'm not proposing a complete shift towards nudism in person and high fashion online. Instead, I see digital fashion as a way to make the clothes we already have more appealing. It allows us to sustainably revamp our closets and follow the trends, as many trends as we want, without the environmental and the social harms that accompany today's fast fashion. Now there's one last thing I want to get off my chest before I go. I'm going to be honest. I do not like the term sustainable fashion. It's not specific. There's no one meaning. And you know what? A term this broad is vulnerable to greenwashing. Sustainable fashion can mean everything from biodegradable, upcycled, recycled, secondhand, women-owned, fair trade, locally made, vegan, and so much more. <laughs> but we can't have it all. We live in a world of trade-offs. And I don't believe there's one sustainable solution or one type of sustainability. Instead, it depends on what we value. With that in mind, digital fashion if implemented thoughtfully, can be a sustainable solution for those who want to reduce their carbon, water, and ecological footprints, and for those who value diversity and want to promote designers and business leaders of all genders, races, and backgrounds. I can't wait to see what you'll be wearing in 10 years. Thank you.